As you have probably already guessed from my accent, I am part British, and I'm a bit ashamed to say that for this evening's speech, I'm going to give in to Brit British stereotypes and talk about the royal family, or at least partly. It's been a big year for the royal family, what with Prince Harry announcing his engagement to the American actress Meghan Markle. Their wedding will be held in a few weeks' time on May the 19th in Windsor Castle. To add to this exciting news, Kate Middleton, the wife of Prince William, the future king, has just given birth to her third child, and he has officially been named Prince Louis Arthur Charles. And this is what I would like to begin my speech about this evening. On April 23rd, at one minute past 11 in the morning, Prince Louis Arthur Charles, the fifth in line to the throne, was born weighing eight pounds and seven ounces, which is 3.8 kilos. As the newest member of the royal family, it is no surprise that he was born in style in one of London's swankiest maternity suites, the private Lindo wing of St. Mary's Hospital in London. The price to rent out one of these luxurious suites for 24 hours and for a natural birth is a mere £5,670, which is about $8,900. As it is England, afternoon tea and a comprehensive wine list for celebrating parents is, of course, included in this price. Now, although this sounds incredibly expensive to us as Europeans, I was shocked to discover that the cost to the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge was slightly less than the price of delivering the average baby in America. According to the International Federation of Health Plans, the average fee for such a delivery in America is $10,800, which is almost $2,000 more expensive than the most expensive delivery option in the UK. It seems preposterous to me that the average American family pays more than one of the richest families in the world for something as basic as childbirth. And it's not just childbirth. In 2016, America spent $10,348 per person on healthcare, which is roughly twice as much as the average for other rich countries. On average, both hospital costs and drug prices can be 60% higher in America than in Europe. Because health insurance is not universally covered by the government, people have to rely on insurance companies, meaning that prices are higher, but also meaning that prices can vary. For example, having your appendix removed can cost anywhere from $1,500 to $185,000, depending on who your insurance company is. America has some of the best hospitals in the world, but it is also the only large, rich country without universal health care. America made a good start after the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln announced that there would be health care for all. At the time, this was one of the largest government-backed health care plans in the world. But America never followed rich European and East Asian countries in introducing universal health care. But why should this be? The first reason is that America has a very strong culture of individualism. Many Republicans, even today, believe that healthcare is not a right, but something people can choose to buy or choose not to buy, for that matter. A second reason is that there is a lot of resistance to reform. 
when nine out of ten of the best paid occupations involve medicine, doctors have very little incentive to change this system. The third and final reason is that about 50% of Americans have their health insurance provided by their employers. President Obama tried to give the people who don't have their health care covered by their employers um, a chance and wanted to focus on the poorest people in America. And so he implemented Obamacare in 2010. This was a health insurance system for the very poorest Americans, but it also subsidized slightly less poor Americans to buy their health insurance. This improved things greatly as it cut the number of uninsured people from 44 million to 28 million. However, it still left a gap among people who weren't poor enough to qualify for Obamacare, but not rich enough to buy their own health insurance. It was a great idea in principle, but in 2012, the Supreme Court allowed states to opt out of Obamacare, and 18 states decided to do so, which left more people uninsured. Last year, the Republicans under Donald Trump tried and failed to repeal Obamacare completely. So, in conclusion, what can we expect for the future of healthcare in America? Many people say that Obamacare was never popular until the Republicans tried to get rid of it. Many Democrats since have come around to the idea of universal health care, and many people hope that the next Democratic candidate for president will campaign for universal health care, much like Bernie Sanders did in the latest US presidential elections. Where America goes from here depends on what happens to health care during the rest of President Donald Trump's presidency, but that is anyone's guess. I'm open to any questions if anyone has any.